Now that we've covered the rig builder and the earth builder, the next set of inputs is the path builder. And this is how we enter in a trajectory in the ERA. So if we click on the path tab, it'll pull up this screen, which is a summary. If we happen to have any survey information already imported, it would show us the unwrapped reach, the plan view, the dogleg severity, cumulative dogleg, and the inclination versus, versus me measured depth in each of these tracks. But since I don't have any surveys imported right now, I need to click on Builder, which is where surveys can be imported, or I can create a new planned path. Over on the left, we have the path sections, and this is the future home of where we'll do our well path planning in ERA. For the time being, this area is non-functional, but in the near future, we will have tools available to us similar to the way Compass works. Uh, in the plan section, this is where you can manually enter in a well path if that's what you choose to do. So for example, I might uh, choose to drill a well with a kickoff point at 1,000 feet measured depth. And let's say I want to drill to 3,500 feet at 75 degrees inclination and 300 degrees azimuth. You can see that ERA is already starting to project a well path based on those parameters. The dotted line is a projection, and then the red solid curve is the actual data based on my inflection points in this table. If I was to drill a tangent out to, like, let's say, 16,500 feet, 75 degrees, 300 degrees azimuth, you can see that ERA is already automatically populating the previous entries in the table to kind of make it a little bit easier when you are doing planning assuming that you're going to be drilling on a similar inclination and azimuth as your last entry, if you were manually entering surveys. Uh, anyway, uh, my plan was then to drop angle, do a slight little S-shaped trajectory, and let's just say that we drop angle uh, to 17,500 feet and perhaps 60 degrees inclination, and then our final measured depth might be, say, 19,000 feet. So there I have an S-shaped trajectory. Now you notice the projection is continuing on much further than where I've actually uh, input, oops, that should be 19,000, to where I've actually input uh, these inflection points. And that's because my wellbore builder, if I move these screens out of the way, my wellbore build, builder by default is assuming that the 7 inch goes to 23,000 feet. And I'll come back at a later point and change what the wellbore actually looks like. Now, you'll notice these plots on the right, as well as the 3D path in the middle, those are uh, all going to be editable and manipulatable by just double-clicking on the path, and that'll pull up a screen where I can choose to remove grid lines, add grid lines, put in a subtitle, remove the legend if I so choose. Uh, I can also change the scale if I'm interested, if I don't want to auto-scale, and let's just say that... Uh, uh, the maximum reach that I want to show would go out to, say, 26,000 feet. I can manually do that here to create a plot that is more to my liking. This is also where I could show formation tops. If you recall earlier in the Earth Builder, we had input several different formation tops, and by clicking this text box, Show Geology, you can see that those tops now show up along the right-hand side of my graph. I change the color of the curve. If I wanted to display something different, say blue, Pretty easy to do right there. I wanted to make the plot thicker or thinner. I can also do that with that control. Uh, the buttons down at the bottom, we're going to cover again later in more detail, but by simply clicking on um, the landscape button, that will save this image to uh, your clipboard. And then when you're in Word or PowerPoint, if you just do a Control V, uh, there's your plot ready to be displayed and edited if you choose. And if I made any changes that I'm not happy with, I can just click the reset button and that'll send it back to the default settings. So you notice this is a planned trajectory. It doesn't have, uh, you know, the tortuosity that would be present in a real path. If I happen to have surveys or maybe I've generated a tortuous path elsewhere, such as in tab 9, uh, I can pull that up in Excel or text form and just do a real simple drag highlight do a control C, come back into ERA, go into the builder, 
with the clear button, I can clear out the data that's in my table and then do a control V to paste in the actual surveys. And now you can see that I've got actual detail in my path. It's similar to what I had with my plan, but a little bit different. And we're going to keep this going forward as we demonstrate ERA, just so you can see the character and the effect of some of the dog legs and what they have on later operations. Uh, a couple other things that are of interest, this table button will pull up a table with all of the interpolated surveys. Every 100 feet or every inflection point, it's going to uh, give you a description of inclination, azimuth, northings, eastings, dog legs, all the key information that you may want to use or export to an Excel file for sending on um, to others who may want to have that information. The other thing that's really interesting is you can just barely notice this dotted red line. It's very faint. It's at the top of the plot. Uh, you notice that the mouse uh, changes when we hover over it. If you click on that and start to drag down the path, you'll notice that this table in the lower right-hand corner gets updated with the actual parameters wherever the line ha happens to be at any given point. So if you were wanting to know just what exactly the position of the well is at, say, 15,000 feet, those parameters are right there and easily displayable. That red line will appear elsewhere in the program, and uh, I'll, I'll bring it up uh, later on when we're looking at some other features. So that's the path builder and how we import or create a new well path.